Today's sermon is taken from Psalm 85, verses 9 to 14, and the topic is the salvation from God is near, taken from verse 10. Now, this is a perfect Bible passage and a perfect topic for the time we are now living in. COVID-19 is getting worse and worse everywhere in the world. The illnesses and deaths are getting nearer and nearer to us. No more far away in some city somewhere, we have friends, we have neighbors who have got the sickness and have died. Greater and greater fear is gripping everyone. It does not matter whether you are rich or poor, powerful or weak, young or old. Everyone is now worried. Everybody is hoping for the vaccine to come to save us. Salvation from the vaccine. But I am afraid that this even when the vaccine comes, we and if even if it's the best vaccine in the world, we will still have to face death. Death is something all of us have to face and something all of us are afraid of. Sooner or later, we will have to face this thing called death and therefore today's psalm is so beautiful it's not salvation from a vaccine salvation from health food and good exercise because those are not salvation those are delaying our death that horrible fearful death all men fear because all men know that we are sinners and god is holy and every man knows the holy God will judge sin. And who can escape from the judgment of God? Nobody. Who can say to God, I am holy? Nobody. The Bible has said, there is, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so today, we thank God for this passage of Scripture. So let's read first in verse 9. Verse 9 says, Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Wow! God wants to speak peace to us, his people, to us who have trusted in him his saints, the ones who have trusted in him. He says, he has given us peace. He has promised us peace, but let us not turn back to folly. You know, folly is depending on men to save us. Folly is depending on things to save us, but it's God who can give us peace, true peace peace. The next verse says, surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. The, that glory may dwell in our land. Wow, I like that. When he says he will speak peace, the next this verse it says in verse 10, surely his, his is God's salvation, is near to those who fear him. Now, how far is this salvation from us? Is it something very difficult to get? No, it is near. It is within our reach. We all come from churches with big crosses on the top, big crosses painted on the wall, everywhere crosses. That cross reminds us how near the salvation is. The salvation is near to those who fear Him. That cross reminds us 
that that salvation is available at the cross. When we realize we are sinners, when we realize God is holy and God will judge, and then we look at that cross and we say, wow, somebody who loved us, Jesus Christ, went on that cross. He was sinless, perfectly sinless, and he went on that cross to take our sins, all of our sins, I repeat, all of our sins, past sins, present sins, future sins, and he paid the penalty for our sins. He suffered on that cross. He bled to wash away all our sins, and then he died for all our sins. And before he died, he said those beautiful words, it is finished. Sudah selesai, which simply means lunas. The penalty of sin has been paid. So for all those who trust in him, who know that he paid the penalty and he proved it when he rose from the dead three days later. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, which we all know that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So this salvation is so near. How far is this salvation? You heard this message before, that Christ died for your sins. Question is, have you received? If you receive this salvation, because John 3.16 says, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you personally believed? Have you personally received Jesus as your Savior? Do you believe that on that cross he died for you and all your sins? Do you fear the judgment to come? And if you turn to Jesus and trusted him to protect you, to take the penalty for you, if you have, then salvation is not only near, it is yours. Because the Bible says in John 3, 16, whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. COVID will not take your life away. COVID will only take your life away on this earth but you have everlasting life. How can your life be lost if it is everlasting? Right? So we look at verse 9, the second part, that glory may dwell in our land. What do you think dwells in our land today in Indonesia? Fear dwells in our land. Everybody's fearful. What happens if I get COVID and die? You know, when you know you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you know he paid the penalty for your sin. When you die, you know what happens? You go to glory. You go to heaven. You go to a place so beautiful. You are promoted. You are not sent to Niraka, but you are promoted. That's called glory. Glory in our heart, knowing that whatever COVID does, it will promote us. Let's go on and see verse 11. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Wow, God's love and faithfulness on that cross. He loved us. He gave His Son. How hard it is for the Father to give His only begotten Son. That kind of love, faithfulness to give us. And then righteousness and peace kiss each other. God's righteousness, God is righteous. He must judge sin but jesus paid the price for us and so we have peace god's righteousness and peace have met together at the cross he judged christ in his righteousness and when jesus said suda selesai we have peace righteousness and peace have kissed each other Verse 12 speaks of the beautiful, beautiful future. Faithfulness springs up from the ground. One day when you have received, if you have received Jesus, you know what happens? You have the Holy Spirit in your heart 
You have a new character, a new DNA. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, Christ lives in us. If you have believed Jesus, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit lives in you, Christ lives in you, what kind of life will you have? You will have a life that is good, a faithful life. Your life would be changed. That life will be coming up, springing up from the ground, from you. And righteousness, verse 12, uh, says righteousness looks down from the sky. God looks down and is so pleased with what is done. Verse uh, 13, yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Wow, God will give what is good. What is the best thing God can give? His Son, the perfect gift for us, the perfect Saviour for us. And then when we have received His gift, we will live, live a life not of fighting one another, cheating one another, lying to one another, selfish to one another, but li live a life that will be so wonderful. The world will be so much better. Verse 14, the last verse, righteousness will go before God. God will always do wonderful things. And when we are, have the Holy Spirit in us, our life will be right. And God will make his footsteps away. God will lead us. So today, can I say to you, in the midst of fear in COVID, salvation is near. If you have not already received Jesus as your personal Savior, if you have gone to church year after year, if you have thought that you need to earn your salvation, that kind of so-called salvation is very far. How could you ever reach heaven? It's not near, it's far. It will give you fear because you don't know whether you are ever near heaven or not. Every religion promises a kind of salvation that gives them fear but our salvation gives us peace because Jesus paid it all. Jesus said, Lunas, and whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So today, may you all receive the greatest Christmas gift. I believe Christmas is near. Christmas is a time for gifts. And you know, the greatest Christmas gift anyone can receive is this peace in our heart that God has given us salvation because His Son paid the price for us. God has given us eternal life, not panjang umo. How long can your umo be panjang? So I'm 73, I already feel the bones are painful, my body is not strong. Do I want to live a long life with more pain? No, I want a beautiful salvation, a glorious salvation in a place God has prepared for us, a place with no pain, no tears, no sorrow, no fighting, no quarreling, but perfect peace and joy. So this salvation of eternal life, eternal peace, eternal joy is yours today if you will just fear God and say, God, I know you are holy and I am a sinner. I've sinned so many sins I cannot count. Please forgive me. I trust that you gave me your precious son and he did the perfect work on the cross. And he took all my sins. I want to receive him as my personal saviour. 
Thank you, God, for salvation so near that brings so much peace. This must be the best Christmas and I found a peace that the world cannot give. May God bless you all this Christmas season.